name is Tim Van Antwerp with Granger Construction based in Lansing, Michigan. On behalf of MSU and our design partner IDS, I'd like to welcome you to a quick tour of MSU's new STEM facility. One of the most interesting and challenging things we had to do to bring the MSU STEM facility to life was transform the 70-year-old Shaw Lane power plant into a student-ready uh, maker and collaboration space. So with the creative geniuses uh, at IDS and support from MSU, we did very interesting things like transforming this boiler I'm standing in front of into an art installation, taking silos on the second floor and turning those into conference rooms, and doing some really unique uh, things and transforming this, this old power facility into really uh, a museum-like setting that also encourages and empowers students to learn in a very different way. So off to my left, you can see uh, what looks like an art wall, and it's uh, comprised of valve wheels and, and boiler caps and all kinds of different artifacts that MSU's project architect went through and hand-selected as ways to sort of pay tribute to the power plant and the history of what the power plant meant to campus, while also creating this space that's such a 21st century learning space and kind of bringing the past and the present together. A second uh, interesting feature and very unique nature of uh, the power plant and the STEM facility was, the, uh, was the, the need to integrate existing structure, which you can see here, with brand new structural steel tied together, but then also as the most challenging feature was bringing in CLT mass timber decks into the space. So again, you know, kind of paying honor and in, in, in reusing the structure that we could and then bringing in some brand new te technologies into the space. Hi, I'm Kevin Marshall. I was project architect with Integrated Design Solutions working on this project. And I'm standing in front of one of those serendipitous moments that we discovered during the demolition process of the power plant interior. And that is the preheat chamber that runs along the east side of, the, of each of the boilers that carried the hot water into the boiler to create, generate steam for electricity. If we look, if you went inside the boiler and you look up, there was large steam chambers that are just peppered with, with holes. And that was every one of those was a pipe that had to be removed and asbestos abated and all those things that had to happen to turn the power plant into something that we could use today. Welcome to the second floor of the atrium on the east side of the Shaw Lane power plant. On this side, we see the original annex that was part of the, where the, wind, the steam turbines worked to generate the electricity. On the opposite side is a new classroom that was added on lecture hall on the first floor and a flat floor active learning classroom on the second floor. And behind me is the limestone entrance of the original 1946 power plant which works nicely with these new classrooms, which are the first classrooms that were dedicated solely to education in over 40 years on Michigan State's campus. So in some instances, the power plant had a little bit more life to give and a little bit more purpose to serve. And as an example, our superintendent figured out that in order to safely do the abatement and demolition work, we needed a tremendous amount of water stored and used on site. So instead of bringing a, a new facility in, they just reused the existing uh, old power plant water tank, filled it up with water, and used it throughout abatement and demolition activities to sort of bring a, a little bit more life and a little bit more purpose out of the power plant. And at the end of the day, save the owner a little more money and, uh, and do things a little more safely. Here I am in the classroom side of MSU STEM, and the self STEM wing, and we cannot talk about the STEM facility without talking about mass timber. Uh, this is one of the largest uh, CLT and glue lamb facilities in the country and certainly one of the first and largest in the state of Michigan. The entire structure is glue lamb and CLT, including our decks with a little bit of structural steel in the penthouses and some select areas. Uh, but this is a, a truly a unique structure. Some of the challenges that were presented you know, started right even in just in the procurement phase. Number one, finding a mass timber vendor that could take on a project of this caliber and this size, and also finding an installation team locally that could do it. So once we crossed that bridge, uh, when I got into construction, there were some other interesting things that we hadn't worked through before, one of which was integrating a significant amount of miscellaneous steel into the timber structure itself. You can see from the Basista rods behind me was a part of the mass timber package and some really, you know, had a, a very aesthetic, but also a structural purpose. Other challenges throughout construction included, you know, how do you, how do you safely construct 
uh, mass timber uh, through two Michigan winters and protect it from moisture, protect it from damage throughout construction. So the team worked through all those things ahead of time. Uh, we actually had wood on the wood, so it covered some of the more heavily exposed and heavily uh, trafficked areas with plywood around our columns to protect them. Uh, all the mass timber came out pre-sealed uh, in the factory to help it uh, uh, both uh, prevent damage and mitigate moisture challenges and little things along the way that we, uh, most of which we planned for and some we learned uh, as construction progressed and we got a little bit smarter and better every day. Now we're in a third floor chemistry lab in South STEM and you'll see this is set up as a double lab in, in two spaces to allow for large classes to happen with windows looking in and putting science on display. One of the things that we planned for in, this, in the construction of the STEM building is how do you design for a 70, 75 year old, 100 year building to be used in a classroom of everyone. You don't know where science is going to go. So one of the things we did was allow flexibility that this lab could be divided into two spaces and opened up into that wall and you have two labs that way, single labs, double labs, triple labs, and to accommodate that, we split the structure along the column lines such that you would be able to put a wall on the module and then still be able to feed it with plumbing and electrical systems. Then adding on, we had the overhead grid system that's modular and allows these service columns to be placed anywhere, and moving them around on a kind of a semester by semester basis. As an MSU alum, uh, being part of this project for the last three years was some of the proudest of my career and some of the most fun. And I think I can speak for all of our MSU partners and our design team uh, that we all shared a really uh, special and unique experience. And so it's fitting that we're going to end this tour in this brand new classroom space that today is empty, uh, but very soon will be filled with uh, the next generation of MSU students. And we really can't wait to welcome them to what's uh, an extremely unique and innovative space uh, to begin their careers and, uh, and carry on uh, the MSU tradition, the MSU spirit.